all the major corporations in the 1960s in particular found themselves suffering from the problem of scarcity of labor. They didn't have enough labor. And scarcity of labor meant they had to start to pay higher wages and better were contracts. And so what seemed like a kind of, con in, a, in a way, a paternalistic concession to the workers in 1945 in terms of better contracts, by the time you get to the mid-1960s, what you're talking about is a situation where the working class is quite powerful because of the scarcity of labor. Uh, and the, what the Civil Rights Act did was to say, well, actually, the labor can start to flow more freely into the monopoly sector. That was one of the consequences. Labor can actually start to, uh, you know, black labor can start to imagine living in a suburb. In fact, that didn't really happen, but very much. But it, it was, it was altogether, it was theoretically possible. But there was another reform in 1965, which is absolutely crucial to this story. And that reform was the reform of the immigration laws. And up until 1965, immigration from Europe would be based on a quota system. You know, the Italians had plenty of slots because, you know, historically they'd been very important. Uh, British people, Germans and the like. So it was, it was based essentially on, on giving priority to those immigrant groups which had come into the country in the 19th century. So the, 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 the quota system was very, very important. And what that did was to hold, say that, you know, people from Latin America can't come in. People from the Caribbean can't come in. People from Asia, hard to get in. So in the 1960s, that was the situation. But in 1965, all of that quota system was, was abolished. And that abolition meant that the United States was basically saying it was open to bring in new labor resources from all around the world, no matter what their color or what their, their problem. This was, I think, a very significant moment. And it was a very significant moment that was shared across the capitalist world. Scarcities of labor were everywhere being felt. And, and it, it, it's astonishing now when you, when, you, when, when you read about it, that in the 1960s, West Germany, as it then was, was subsidizing the import of Turkish labor. It was bringing in Turks and encouraging the Turks to come in and labor. The French were subsidizing the import of North African labor, the Maghrebians, as they were called, from Algeria, Tunisia, and all the rest of it. Uh, the Swedes were bringing in from Yugoslavia and from Portugal. The British uh, were opening up to the British Empire and saying, basically, you know, we need you. In fact, immigration was seen by the corporations as one of the key means by which you could undermine working class power. And therefore, there was a broad support amongst the corporate capital for immigration policies that were relatively open and which would uh, allow uh, a challenge to be made through immigration to working class power. And this, I think, was kind of a, a major, major feature connected with the Civil Rights Act. What that did in this country was very, very simple. It introduced the idea that big labor and, in fact, the power of labor in general was, could be undermined by in the import of labor. And that imported labor could be of any color, any provenance. In other words, you had to open yourself up to that. The same was true in Europe. What this did was to actually boost a long history of anti-immigrant anti -immigrant feeling. It was this moment which led to all sorts of shifts going on. And it was the moment when the white working class was feeling threatened by immigrant labor of different color and the like. Now, then this issue of immigration started to become significant. There's a degree that we are still faced with these problems of immigration. They have their roots, and this is where the long durée comes in. They have their roots. Back in the 1960s, 
when immigration was used by corporate capital to undercut the power of the working class. But the anti-immigrant politics these days is always thought of as a cultural question. Whereas back then it clearly had its roots, clearly had its roots as a labor question. 